Welcome back. It is debate day, debate days, plural, in Detroit. When Michigan holds its Democratic primary in March, the vote here in the Detroit area is absolutely critical. Wayne County is the state's most populous, and 40 percent of its voters are African American. Our lunch conversation with four undecided Democrats included discussion of their debate expectations. You've got 20 Democrats in your city this week trying to make their case. Mm -hmm. Anybody have a firm candidate yet? Not at all. Too early. Too early. Too early. Too All early. planning to vote in the Democratic primary? Yes. Absolutely. You say you don't have a firm candidate yet. Um, who has impressed you? Doesn't have to be one, could be two, three, four. And what are you looking for? Hmm. Uh, right now, I believe my top contender, if I could pick one, would be Elizabeth Warren. Um, I think she's an incredible woman um, who really speaks to the issues that I'm passionate about. Kamala Harris, uh, surprisingly, uh, is someone that I'm also looking at. I wasn't quite sure, um, just based on her history as a prosecutor. Um, but the more that I've listened to her um, as a candidate, I think that she's a bold woman. I think that she commands the debate stage. Um, and so she's someone that I also am looking at. Um, and I am looking at uh, Joe Biden as well. A big issue for me is the student loan forgiveness and um, what we're going to do to attack this debt crisis. Um, I love that Elizabeth Warren has firm plans about how she wants to attack it. Um, Elizabeth Warren literally has a plan for everything. <laughs> she should have t-shirts that say that. I've got a plan for that, literally. So I haven't been I think impressed. she does. Right. Well, <laughs> I let me get one. <laughs> I also love um, Castro and some of the things that he's had to say about immigration, especially in terms of decriminalizing um, you know, some of the uh, border crossing issues and things like that and treating it more as a civil issue. I like Elizabeth Warren. She does have a plan. So I also like Biden. I feel comfortable with Biden that I don't think that he will send me back to a different state or a different country. I feel comfortable <laughs> with him. So we even have to think that. First of all, I got to have somebody who's going to win, who, has, who can win. So it's about 22 to 25 candidates. Um, it's a little know, confusing, isn't it? Yeah, about <laughs> 10 or 20 of them. I, well, not 20, but 10 of them I've never heard of. So, uh, and, and I'm not a big political guy, so I'm more home-based, like, in the streets. So I just, I need that name. So, so help me understand when you mean you need someone who can win. Does that mean you're willing to compromise if you think this is the person who can beat Trump, who can take Michigan back? My thing is I have to have a Democrat. It has to be a Democrat. And I'm sorry to say, but... If it's Bozo the Clown, and he's a Democrat, I'll take him over Trump, because I already got one in the office right now. <laughs> the three ladies here have all mentioned Elizabeth Warren. Can you sell Medicare for All, free college tuition, the Green New Deal, can you sell that in one national election? Or will Trump say, he'll call it socialism, but let's take that label off it. Mm -hmm. It is a lot of government, and it's a lot of power in Washington. Do you worry? Um, even though you, you agree with those things, that that Democrat can't win? That's an interesting question, um, because I think right now the Democratic Party is in an odd space. We saw it in 2016 when people weren't satisfied, they didn't get out to vote. And so, again, I think that, you know, though these might be quote-unquote socialist issues, I think we're really talking about basic human rights in a lot of these cases. Um, I don't think that we should... Um, minimize these issues just because, like, oh, this isn't the traditional Democratic stance. That's been the big debate. That, right. Uh, are, have Democrats just been afraid to sell it? So I think the Democrats need to get on board and realize that if we want to win, some of that does require in, in embracing things that are far left, that are about the people, that are about fighting. And I think in terms of whether a candidate can win, I've heard so many people say, and I have reasons that I like Joe Biden as a, as a candidate, but I've heard so many people say, I'm voting for Biden, not because they support his policies, not because of the great work he's done, but just because he's a white man and a white man can beat Trump. And I think that what the, the right wanted was to scare us into thinking that the only way we could have a country is for it to be a white country. And I'm, I'm unwilling to play into that. I think that Elizabeth Warren has, or Kamala Harris, both have just a, as good of a shot as anyone. When you watch the debates, Tuesday and Wednesday night, what are you thinking? I'm, I'm really looking for them to fix health care. I'm right now recovering from breast cancer. And believe me, when the bills came in the door, if I didn't have health care, I'd have been dead. 
just too expensive. I don't want those candidates getting up there attacking each other. I want them talking about the issues and attracting the Democratic people. I'd be interested, you all travel more than I do, on just what you pick up from the language there. What struck me was the generational divide. The two older voters yeah. uh, used the word compromise more and were troubled with the idea that could you sell all of this, even though they liked Elizabeth Warren, could you sell all this in one election? What else jumps up? Well, I just, I, I think that that is it's such a universal concern for so many uh, Democrats who do not necessarily agree with Bernie Sanders or Elizabeth Warren. Um, th this idea that these ideas could be really expensive and that people will not take the time to understand, for example, how Elizabeth Warren wants to, to pay for them. Um, at, whereas, you know, you have the many hard-charging younger voters who say, we want it all, let's go for it. But um, what that woman was saying about how she was comfortable with Joe Biden, that's something I've heard reflected, okay. particularly among older yeah. African-American voters. They trust him and they know, they know his record. They know where he's been, and right. they know where he's going, right. and they feel like it's a steady choice that could take on Trump. Right. I, I, yeah. I'm, I'm, I know you guys. Less risky, it's absolutely. It's also yeah. just yeah. a great case study in how voters are more complicated than uh, we often give them right. credit for, right? That we right. tend to try to, you know, group these candidates in ideological categories or divide the field on the basis of issues. And you know, Mrs. Armstrong talking about yeah. how you know, she loves Elizabeth Warren, she really likes Joe Biden too, right? You wouldn't yeah. think, based on the way a lot of this right. gets talked about, that you would narrow your choices down to those yeah. two options. And one yeah. of the things President Obama was able to do when he won was both energize sort of the left, the progressives, as a new face on the stage, as well as, you know, be com com comforting enough to the moderates and people who did not want to move too far left. And I think that's one of the reasons Joe Biden is getting support. It's because people connect him to his time with Obama. He's a comfortable candidate for a lot of people. And he can still say, I have a record that has progressive uh, policies as well. All but then they watch him and then they're yeah. like, is he yeah. up well, to that's it? Just yeah. it. All, Very all, true. all were comfortable with Biden, but those three African-American women have been most impressed by Elizabeth Warren. I think that right. is the biggest dynamic mm -hmm. in the race right now as we go forward. Can Biden hold it or is she coming on? We shall see. Up next, we return to the pressure on the 2020 Democrats on the stage tonight in debates. CNN's Noah Gray caught Beto O'Rourke in the middle of what you might call morning debate prep. How are you feeling about the debate? I'm feeling good. <laughs> feeling good? Uh, what are you doing to prepare? Running. This it? Well, running and thinking through what I want to say tonight.